Bonjour! Hi everyone, my name is Whitney and welcome back to a new episode of WIT. Today on WIT, I am going to make a hybrid version of Claire Saffet and Ina Garden's French apple tarts, but gluten free. I thought it would be a good idea since this series is all about basically like experimenting and see what a novice baker can do with a professional recipe. I figured I'd just mesh the two and do you say mash or mesh? Or mesh the two together, mash the two together? I don't know. So that's what we're making today. Let's get started. I'm gonna show you what you're gonna need for this French apple tart recipe. Here we go. This recipe I'm going to do in steps. So I'm gonna start with the dough because the dough has to refrigerate for at least an hour. I'm gonna make the dough in a food processor. I'm going to attempt to make this in my small food processor. I might have to do this in batches or it may be a disaster. I don't know, let's try it out. For the dough, you are going to need the following. You are going to need two cups of flour. I am using gluten-free flour. The recipe that I'm sort of following is that you need xanthan gum. My flour actually comes with xanthan gum, so I didn't buy extra. Um, hopefully, the amount that's in this flour is enough. I'm hoping. I'm gonna need one tablespoon of sugar. I need one and a half sticks of unsalted butter. Make sure everything is cold. Also, this dough is gonna come together with a half a cup of ice water. I'm gonna put a half a teaspoon of my kosher salt, one tablespoon of sugar, So now I'm gonna add the cold butter. So this is gonna go into the fridge for at least an hour. But to me, it's like a fancy applesauce. Yes, no, should we look it up? I don't, let's see what it is. Made of whole or pieces of fruit in sugar syrup. Whole fruits are cooked in water with sugar and spices. Okay, so you're going to need a half a stick of butter a quarter cup of dark brown sugar. You do need a vanilla bean, but I'm going with vanilla extract. Three apples. So Claire went with Honeycrisp. I'm going with Granny Smith. I just like Granny Smith apples better. Your salt. This recipe calls for apple cider. I am going with, oh, this actually is apple cider. I bought the correct thing. So excited that I actually bought apple cider. Really don't have to buy apple cider. You could just buy um, apple juice and maybe add some like warming spices because that's I believe that's what the difference is between apple juice and apple cider I think don't quote me um, okay so I'm just going to get started now so let me just consult Claire and see exactly what I need to do so I'm gonna cut up Then I'm going to add my quarter cup of dark brown sugar, quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna add like a teaspoon. So basically, Claire says that we're just making a toffee right now. I think it's really ironic that I'm actually making a toffee right now because that's the thing that scared me the most out of making my Alvin Zhu chocolate chip cookie recipe. Thought of making toffee just seemed like so unbelievably hard to me. So like I completely left it out of the recipe, but I'm doing it here. Like I, I, I feel like I've graduated. Like I'm actually gonna attempt to make it in this recipe. 
I don't know why it seems less daunting. Maybe it's just the way the clear like presents it. I don't know. But anyways, so this is what we're actually going to make a toffee right now. So let me follow, see what else she says. Bring it to a boil. Really try to get rid of the water. Okay, so now that I'm gonna take my saucepan here and I'm gonna bring it over to my stove and I'm gonna put it at about medium heat and try and bring it to a boil. So, okay, while my toffee is on the stove, I'm gonna keep an eye on it while I get started on my apples. I've got three Granny Smith apples and I am going to peel and chop these. Claire says that unlike a toffee, you can stir it. So I'm just stirring it and waiting for it to come to a boil. Oh, it's starting to boil. Let's see. God, I wish you guys could smell this. It smells, it smells like Christmas. It's just delicious. Okay, I better check the recipe because I don't know what to do now. Hold on. I'm rushing because I think my toffee is ready and I don't want it to burn so I'm just cutting up the apples quickly in big chunks running 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 back and forth I'm going to take my apples and I'm gonna put them in to the toffee see that this is getting oh my timer just went off okay so you could see that this is getting a lot of color on it I can feel already that the apples are getting quite soft so right now I'm going to go in and I'm going to add my apple cider Okay, so the apples have been simmering now for about, um, I'd say a good 20 minutes. I have my potato masher here and I'm gonna go in and just break up the apples. Now that I broke up all my apples, I'm just gonna keep letting it simmer. Hi guys, okay, so in all honesty, it is another day. Yesterday, it was just too late to start assembling my French apple tart. I took out my dough that's been in the fridge. I do not have a rolling pin, so what I do is sometimes I just take old wine bottles and wrap it in Glad Wrap and use this as my rolling pin. You would think after now, like doing a few episodes in this series that I would have purchased a rolling pin by this point. Um, you would have thought, but um, maybe I'm sure they have one at the dollar store and you guys know how I love the dollar store. I also got a pen sheet ready with some parchment paper. <music> flower my surface first just to make sure that nothing sticks Claire always uses this like thwacking motion so I'm just gonna do that it's basically just to flatten out the dough I don't know if this is going to work <laughs> um, Change of plans. Okay.
rolled out my pastry dough and already I know that there's gonna be issues, but this is what I've got and let's just keep going because I don't know, it could turn out good. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge. I'm a little worried. <laughs> I'm a little worried about my pastry dough. I don't think it's good. If you're not doing a gluten-free version, follow Claire's recipe because I'm sure it will turn out perfectly. I'm nervous. I don't have high hopes for it, but I'm just gonna keep going with the flow. I'm gonna keep trying, I'm just gonna just keep moving forward with this recipe and hopefully it does turn out good but like your gut kind of tells you like maybe this is not the way it should be i'm gonna say it right now like i don't think this pastry dough is going to be good again i could be proven wrong but, so i have three apples here totally got ahead of myself and started cutting up the apples and just getting excited about like putting this tart together and I forgot to take out my apple compote so here it is this is what I made yesterday um, again I don't think it's perfect because I'm um, looking at Claire's hers firmed up a lot more than mine did I think maybe I could have used another apple but I did taste this and it is un believable like this i i would make every week just to have as a snack it, after i cut my apples you just want to keep them in their little packages and then just fan them out a bit just put them down. There's no rhyme or reason. There's just the way that you want to decorate your apple tart. Your French apple tart, excuse me. My apple tart is all done. I've assembled it. Let me see if you can see it here. I'm gonna put it into the oven now. So the last step after the French apple tart comes out is to glaze it. So the glaze is a half a cup of apricot jam. It also calls for two tablespoons of apple cider. I do not have any more apple cider because I bought a very small container of it thinking I didn't need it. Note to self, like always read your recipes before you go food shopping. It's really important. <laughs> so I'm gonna add half a cup of my apricot jam to my saucepan and I am going to add two tablespoons of rum. You could see like how beautiful it looks with the glaze on top. Let's try this. I seriously doubted myself, but this is delicious. 
like I said before. If you don't have to make it a gluten-free recipe, follow Claire's recipe to a T. It's probably insanely delicious. I'm sure it's 10 on 10. But if you do have a gluten intolerance or allergy, try making my version. I will put the recipe down below. Thanks guys, thanks for watching another episode of Whipped. If you like this episode, please like and subscribe. Until next time, au revoir, bye.